Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Miscellaneous Debris Podcast with me, your host, the Mad Chatter, Ryan MK. That is right. Thank you for joining once again, or for the first time if you're new. And if you are new, this show, this pod, is exactly what the title suggests. Miscellaneous debris, random stuffs, random shit, random talks, random chatter. Whatever appeals to me on a weekly basis, you know. But thank you for joining. And don't forget to check out my social media at RMK Madness on Twitter, on Instagram to check out all of my content. Yes, if you're into the fantasy football shit, I dabble in that a little bit as well. You can check out all my content on Twitter. I write for playerprofiler.com. I do a dynasty football podcast. So check that out if you're into that sort of thing. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you all have been well since the last pod. Been damn good here at the Madhouse MK. Watched a lot of New Japan wrestling over the past handful of days. <laughs> and you know me. I love that shits. Even got my Bullet Club shirt on, that's right. Unfortunately, one of my favorite wrestlers, Hiromu Takahashi, was injured and could not compete this weekend. And, and even more unfortunately, he's going to be out for like six months. It's a bummer. But... Really good shows this weekend, and I'm very excited because coming up, it's March. It's March now. Let's hope this month goes okay. (laughs) But it's March. And now that March is here, we're getting the New Japan Cup. Single-ish, single, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, we're already starting with, you know, the tongue twisters and the... Okay, maybe we'll try that again. You suck, you jackass. I'm not sure if I deserve that because it was really just my first mistake. But however, it was very early in the pod. So let's try that again. Single elimination wrestling tournament. The winner, a shot at the champion. Very exciting stuff. It's always, always a good run of shows every year for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that should be fun. That should be fun. So I did a lot of that. Watched a lot of TV with the kids. It was cold out. Sorry, I burped a little bit there. (laughs) Cold out here, so we didn't do a ton outside. But we did get out for a couple hours today, play in the snow. Had a nice snowball fight. The three-year-old thought it was the greatest thing, hitting me with, well, they're really just little pieces of snow, (laughs) not really snowballs. And then he'd turn around and I'd just drill him right in the back with a nice, compact snowball. But he thought it was great, just the whole thing. He just loved it. And meanwhile, the the six-year-old, no, I know, (laughs) not off to a great start on the talking front on this pod tongue keeps getting twisted. Moving on. But the six-year-old decided to make like a snow couch, (laughs) which everybody sat in but me, because I did not have the proper equipment to keep my butt from getting cold, so I did not do it. But it was a nice little snow couch. So we had a good time. We also did another one of our campouts, you know, Me and the boys give the wife the bed to herself for the night so she can get a nice, wonderful, relaxing evening of sleep while the boys and I camp out with boys' night downstairs. Now, we do this occasionally. I might have mentioned it on the pod. I have these little, like, stick and ball contraptions, and you put them together. I can't remember what the fuck they're called, but you can build things like tents, and build a nice little tent over over the futon. It just it's a good time for us all. And we usually do some video games, watch some movies, board games as well. Because here we're a big board game family. We love board games. Our collection is massive. I've, I'm I'm pretty sure once or twice on a previous pod I've mentioned this. 
and I still have yet to get a picture of the whole collection up on Twitter, Instagram. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure to do that so that everybody can see this awesome collection of board games. So we've got this huge collection of board games, and the kids themselves have their own collection of board games. But they tend to enjoy the adult games a little bit more. <laughs> but we have a lot of stuff in this collection. It, you know, I mean, with the kids' games, we have all the classics there, you know, the candy lands, the shoots and ladders, and, you know, some of the new stuff that's coming out. Lots of weird things. The one where you feed the pig, the chow crown. That game is terrible. That's a fucking terrible. Don't ever buy that game for your the Chow Crown game. This game is fucking terrible. First of all, it's made like a piece of shit, and it doesn't really work that well. It's like your head has to be just the right spec. Like it's not working right for me. It's not working right for the kids. How are we fucking supposed to eat the goddamn food off the little fucking plastic tiny forks that don't hold the food worth a shit, anyways? Sorry. Don't get that fuck. Chow Crown. Terrible game. Terrible game. Hungry Hungry Hippos? Great game. <laughs> and they got all the different versions of Uno. You know, they got the regular Uno, but then they make an Uno for everything. I remember I used to have a Harry Potter version. And see, all the different versions have like an additional rule. Like the Harry Potter one, there was a special card or something. I can't really remember. Was something having to do with Voldemort, maybe? But, so my son has a Minecraft set. And this, this Minecraft Uno, also additional rule. It's crazy what they could do. But I dig it. I dig it, because I like me some Uno. Personally, my favorite card game, other than, you know, some Texas Hold'em. My favorite kind of card game is Phase 10. I love me some Phase 10. Been playing that since I was a kid. But we got tons of the adult classics, too. Clue, Scategories, Battleship, a few different Monopolies that just sit there because we never play Monopoly. We got a bunch of the Seen It games. I have Friends Seen It. Nobody can beat me on Friends Seen It. <laughs> As if that's something to be super proud of. Well, I am. God damn it, I am. But I really do, I personally, I really enjoy like in the in-depth games. That's why I've always loved Clue. I've always loved Clue. Just, you know, you really have to get into it. It takes some time. And that's why I also mentioned previously, I know I've said that a few times. I'll mention previously. But I talked about the game Catan and how you can get it on the app now. Now, the game Catan, this is me and my wife's favorite fucking game. We love this fucking game. And what's crazy about it all is that the actual board game, they have all these different expansion sets you can get, and it's amazing. It's amazing. I love this stuff. And it all began back when my wife and I, this was many years before the COVID, when people could actually get together, not in fear, unless you're a jackass. <laughs> but... We used to have game night. We used to hold game night. And one night, my best friend Caleb, we went over to him and his wife's place, had game night there, and they introduced us to Catan. And I'm sitting there as he's fucking explaining it to me. And, and I'm thinking, Caleb, what the fuck are you game are you trying to get me to play? Because it seemed lame as all shit. And I swear to you, 10 minutes into that game, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I need some brick. Now I need some brick. If you don't know what Katana is, you might not know what I'm talking about, but fucking need some brick. Oh, the goddamn robber. Ah. Katana. Best game ever. Best game ever. If you haven't played it, check it out. It, it's pricey. <laughs> That's the shitty part about it. Because I don't just got fucking 50 bucks to throw out. They're $50. But I love them. Exploding Kittens, that whole, that shit is phenomenal. They're card games too, but they're also so different. Exploding Kittens is fun, but then you get into Bears versus Babies. Holy shit, this game is insane. And then you've got Crabs. Oh, this one is super crazy. I haven't got to play it enough because you've got Crabs. 
you need enough people to make teams. So you need four people, which is kind of difficult. We can't play with the little ones yet. But then they just came out with a new one called Throw Throw Burrito. Got it for the wife for Christmas. And we've yet to play it because we slack. <laughs> we do that. We get busy and then we just forget we have new shit to do, like new movies to watch, new games to play. <laughs> we get to it eventually. I mean, hell, for those people who've been listening long enough, I got that goddamn Lego friend set for, ha- for Christmas. I almost said Halloween. For Christmas. And it was, what, damn near February before we got it put together? <laughs> but so we had the camp out with the kids, board games, as I was saying. And we played Atmosphere, which is a game, another game that I've been playing since I was a kid. And if you haven't played this, it's fucking awesome. It's a DVD game. You put in the DVD. You get the board out. And the different characters that you can be are like horror type characters. There's a vampire, a mummy, a zombie, a poltergeist, etc. Vamp. Did I say vampire? I said vampire. So you have these different characters. And then they have the different realms that they're from. And there's colored keys for each realm. So you pick a character, and you have to go around the board and collect a key of each color. And then you go to the center of the board to win. And to win, see, at the beginning of the game, everybody writes down their greatest fear. And you put it into this well. And when you collect a key of every color, then you go to the center of the board, open the well, take out a fear. If it's not your fear, you win. Now the catch is, the entire time you're playing, this DVD is playing. And it's like a scary background, smoke, clouds, thunder, lightning. (laughs) Excuse me from the sniffles. (laughs) Let's have something to do with my my nose has been messed up, right? And I told you all last week about the the septal perforation. Now I got two holes in my nose. (laughs) Ah, 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 Stop it, nose. Leave me alone. Okay. But then you got this blank screen, stormy, creepy, and then there's a guy. He looks like Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars, Darth Sidious. That's who he looks like. But he pops on the screen and says, stop, whose turn is it? That's off. And he spends the entire game popping up randomly and fucking with you. It's just phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. And the kids get a kick out of it. They love it. So we did that. Like I said, they're more into the adult games. So we did that, and then we played some Jumanji, which is a good, like, in-between game. Good for adults and kids, I would say. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And in this Jumanji game, it folds out just like the one on the original movie, and it, it looks just like the board game. Oh. It's a blast. It's a good game. Good game. Fucking Jumanji is a great movie. Great movie. And, and don't get me wrong. I really enjoy, actually, you know, I could go back and forth. Back or, or, okay, that's wrong. I'm 50-50 on movie remakes, right? Sometimes they're pretty good. Sometimes they're shit. I actually like the new Jumanji movies. But you just can't top the original. You just can't. It's amazing. From top to bottom. And man, Robin Williams is fantastic in that. So is David Allen Greer, though. He makes me laugh. Gotta miss Robin Williams. That was a tough one. I mean, his movies are great. Felt like just, you know, a good human being. And personally, I loved his stand up. (laughs) It was fantastic. One of my favorite bits was when he's talking about golf. He's talking about the Scots and how crazy they have to be to invent a sport like golf. Starts going, we're going to take a stick and whack, whack the ball. Ah, fucked up stick. (laughs) And we'll put a little flag in the hole to give you fucking hope. (laughs) Oh, and you're going to do that? One time, are you? Fuck no! 18 fucking times! (sniffs) 
Love that Robin Williams. <sighs> Love that Robin Williams. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's, but speaking of golf, Tiger Woods was in a car crash. Y'all hear about that shit? Now, apparently he's okay. But it's always crazy. And right around, you know, time when this time last year, there was another vehicle accident involving a helicopter and a star basketball player, former star basketball player, and his daughter. So, you know, immediately, Tiger's in a car crash. People start going, oh, shit, not, not, let's not start this shit again. This is how we started 2020. Luckily, Tiger seems to be doing A-OK. But aside from that, what else is going on in the world or the country? Because the, there's some, some shit going on. Oh. Nice little break. Puff of marijuana, clear the nasal passage and, you know, all, all the holes in there, I guess. <laughs> Too much information? No? Okay, we're good. So, we've got a little bit of news to discuss. I'm going to start with COVID because um, it is, in my humble opinion, that entirely too many fucking people are acting just like we're out of the woods. I talked about this last week. I talked about the past few weeks. The variants, like, it's in California. Much more contagious. A bit deadlier. Not good news if two strains merge. This is what the experts fear. They also fear a surge could be coming. Because, well, A, so many people are not acting like there's a pandemic. And B, well, the cases are currently plateauing right around 70,000. Now, normally what they'd like to see is a continuation and decline of cases, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, cases aren't going up. That's a good thing. Not if they're plateaued. That's not good if it's just staying in that range. 70,000 a day? That's not a good place to plateau at. It's not good to plateau anyway. Because every time there's been a plateau... It's been followed by a surge, by a spike. So the experts are worried, and rightly so. I'm worried. Shit. Eventually, something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. But shit like, you hear this story, Trader Joe's? Fucking Trader Joe's. Pieces of shit. A guy at Trader Joe's, an employee. If you've heard, if you've not read this story, go check it out. He was fired, essentially for requesting better COVID safety protocols at his place of work, and he was fired for not having team spirit, basically. That's fucked. Fuck Trader Joe's. During, during what's going on in this country the past year, you're going to fire somebody for wanting shit to be a little safer? That's fucked. Yeah, while well, we're all struggling, well, not all of us, some of us struggling. Speaking of struggling, this struggling the government to get this fucking stimulus out. Now, I'm sure that there's some shit the Democrats are putting in there that the Republicans have a legit gripe about. The minimum wage shit shouldn't be one of them. Because mostly what the Democrats are trying to do is some good shit. But the minimum wage thing? Y'all really have a problem with that? And people are like, oh, shit's gonna go up, shit's gonna... Shit goes up all the time. Anyway. Prices. 
everywhere, on everything. Remember Xboxes used to be a couple hundred bucks? Like brand new, when they first came out. And I get it. Technology's improved. More shit goes into making them. Blah, 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 blah. But my oldest son just turned 21. Which, by the way, his cooking videos, his the Mad Chatter, Cooking with Mad Chatter, how-to videos for my son and everyone else, they will be coming soon. Make sure to keep an eye out on my social this week for him. That's right. But he's talking about a PlayStation, the new PlayStation, that's like $800. It's about half the rent. What the fuck is the $800? (laughs) Prices rise everywhere. Rent? Ain't got no problem with people raising the fucking rent every goddamn year. Every goddamn year. I can't even think of the last time because obviously I don't own my own place. Been renting for quite a few years. And it doesn't matter which state. It doesn't matter which landlord. Every fucking year that shit goes up. But no. No, 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 no. Can't let people make more. And I've seen some arguments about this shit on Twitter like, yeah, well, if that minimum wage is supposed to be for people to, you know, entry level and blah, blah. No. Minimum wage is supposed to be the minimum amount a motherfucker can live on. <sighs> this is the problem, see, with the way the country's run. As I've said many times before, you look at how things are done in other countries, other developed countries. The free health care, the free education. We wouldn't have so many... Idiot-ass, uneducated motherfuckers running around this goddamn country still supporting. What? The Confederacy? Yes. Still supporting supporting the blah, 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 blah. (laughs) You know what I mean. You suck, you jackass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me keep going. Supporting the Confederacy, talking about flat earth, Claiming shit without understanding the actual... Like... And some of these dudes get lucky. And they get jobs. That turn out to be really good money makers. Good for them. I'm not dogging them. But for somebody to sit there and say, Well, you don't need minimum wage. You should do better. Some of us have done all we can. Some people don't quite have the same luck. Because there is some luck to play. You can grind... uh, Fuck, man. You can grind every second of every day of every year. You gotta catch a little break somewhere along the way. Most times. So I don't buy into that shit. But it's the rest of this... It's... The, the conservative Republican mindset, this Republican, it, you know, it, the revolt against democracy, really. I saw that somewhere and I was like, yeah, that's that's what that shit is. And you had the CPAC and the return of the villain, the CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, of course, over this past weekend. And holy hell was there a lot of dumb shit said. A whole lot of dumb shit. There was a fucking stupid statue, gold statue thing (laughs) of this particular fucking asshole villain. There was a lot of dumb shit said. Like, plenty of it. Like the, you know, South Dakota Governor Christy Noem who bragged about her COVID response. Even though South Dakota has the third worst numbers, mortality rate for for COVID in the world. Not just, not just the United States, the world, South Dakota, third worst. But she said she's done a great job. And that Dr. Fauci, he's wrong a lot. 
Somebody asked Fauci about it. He said, numbers don't lie. They don't, bitch. <laughs> nope, numbers don't lie. Wrong a lot. That's part of science. Some people, again, uneducated, do not understand how science works. You know what you know until it's proven otherwise. And as you're learning about something, particularly something as difficult and deep as a virus, there's going to be lots of trial and error. There's going to be lots of, oh, hey, we thought this, but no, it's not looking like that anymore. This is part of the scientific process. But, uh, again, the uneducated. And many of them sit in the palm of one man's hand. The biggest news of the conference this weekend. The return, the return of not just America's supervillain, but the world's supervillain. And I wouldn't maybe put him on the level of supervillain because he's not that smart. That'd be giving him a little too credit, too much credit. So we'll just go with the villain, former president, dickhead Donald Trump. Still out there pushing his lies, talking about revenge against Democrats and the Republicans that voted against him. More election lies, bashing Biden for what he's done so far. He's just mad he reversed a bunch of his uh, Trump shit. That's what... (laughs) More election lies. Hints at running in 24 with more election lies by saying, I'll beat him a third time. It's crazy. Because, again, I'm a student of history. Before I got my bachelor's in communications, I had strongly considered one in history and teaching history. And one of the most interesting aspects to me in American history is World War II and how crazy it is that the Nazi party rose to power. It's fucking insane when you go back and look at everything. Fucking insane how it all happens. And there's so many similarities between that and some of what Trump's done. And people get mad like, oh, you want to cancel somebody because they compare some of the shit that's going out to being a Jew while you sit there and compare Trump to Hitler. Well, yeah, there's a big difference. Acting like a mask mandate is anything close to what the Jews had to live under In Nazi Germany, you're fucking out of your mind. Trump, Hitler, there's actually comparisons there. And let's not forget the fucker keeps a copy of Mein Kampf on his fucking nightstand. Trump's a dude who likes the attention and the power and all of that. Now, here's the thing. Trump wasn't nearly as charismatic or smart as Hitler, as I and I've said that before when discussing this very thing. So that makes him a little less scary. But the problem is, he's still getting a lot, a lot of support. Because there's a lot of uneducated and racist motherfuckers in this country. But I bring up Hitler because you have to remember. I shouldn't say, shouldn't say it like that. You don't have to remember. But if you want to remember, go back and look at through history, read about some of this shit, and leading up to World War II, some of the stuff that happened. Because Hitler was actually imprisoned for treason, for leading a coup against the government. Yeah. It was in prison where he wrote Mein Kampf. He he got out not too much longer later, and, and really he was more powerful then, and eventually got the Nazi party into Well, relevancy. And then eventually it took over. And I think we got to hope that this motherfucker goes to prison himself. (laughs) Because I just, man, if he runs in 2024, okay. It's been a good couple of months. 
Oh, no, just a month because it was like January, <laughs> mid January when Biden got. Yeah. It's been a little over a month. Anxiety is back. <laughs> it's back. Ugh. Real life villains, they're shitty. They're shitty. <laughs> I much prefer, uh, you know, like comic book and movie villains, you know? Give me some Joker. Yeah. You know, I really do. I feel like Batman has the best villains of all time. Now, I really do love some Star Wars villains. I did. Star Wars has some good villains. But specifically when it comes to comic books. This is a little comic life here. When it comes to comic books, does it get any better? I mean, you know, X-Men is very well-rounded because it has so many characters in general. There's a lot of fucking cool villains. But when you look at Batman, I mean, fuck. It's tough to beat. You got, as mentioned, Joker, Penguin, Riddler, Bane, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze. These are just the classics, right? Those are just the classics. Then you can get into, you know, some of the more underrated, lesser known guys. Raz al Ghul, Victor Zaz, Killer Croc, Scarecrow. I guess he's a little more popular. Mad Hatter. <laughs> Grundy, Solomon Grundy. The Calendar Man. So many interesting, awesome fucking characters in that universe. The Batman universe. It's one of my favorite. It's a shame. It's the only thing from DC worth a shit. <laughs> I, do, I don't give a fuck about Superman. I don't. I, you know what? I do kind of dig some Teen Titans stuff. That's okay. But really, I don't like Superman. Don't care about Aquaman. Like, I just... Wonder Woman. I just... I, just, I never got into any of that. Never. Superman kids when I was a kid. Christopher Reed. Never. I just... It, Watched him, but it wasn't all that. Batman was way better. Y you know, pretty much anything for me was better. I, I just never, not as a kid, not throughout growing up, never got into Superman. Just couldn't do it. And really, the, the whole rest of DC, there's just not a lot there. Batman or bust for me. As much as I love Batman, I mean, how, how can you compete with what Marvel does? I mean, Avengers way better than Justice League. Sorry. I mean, you've got Iron Man, Spider-Man, <laughs> Captain America, Thor, Hulk. It's, it's, it, you, again, the X-Men. There's so much in the Marvel Universe. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Doctor Strange. Oh, he's one of my favorites. I'll take Doctor Strange over anybody in the DC Universe aside from Batman. You know, Batman's my shit. But aside from Batman, I mean, hell, give me Ant-Man over the rest of them. <laughs> it's what I think of the rest of DC. The movies are better, too. I mean, they've... You know, even even the Avengers movies that didn't, didn't quite follow all the storylines and everything, like with, you know, Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet and all of that, but still did a pretty good job. I enjoy most of the X-Men movie, movies. I mean... The Spider-Man stuff, the Iron Man stuff. I mean, all of it is all, you know, really done well. I shouldn't say all. Most of it is really done well. And you just look at DC, and again, it's Batman or bust. <laughs> I do love the Suicide Squad. I take that back. I forgot about the Suicide Squad. I love me some Suicide Squad. And I would also say people hated on that movie way too much. I, did, I don't. 
Was it the best thing out there? No. But did you, people really, there were some people that really dogged on that shit. I don't get it. I don't get it. Suicide Squad was solid. That was one of the better DC movies, man. Come on. Man and woman. Come on. I mean, Endgame. <sighs> Fucking amazing. Even though, you know, again, not quite in line with the stories in the comic. Still fucking amazing in my mind. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Hard to be. Especially when you got DC looking over there. Not great. <laughs> but you got the Batman movies. But not Ben Affleck Batman. <laughs> you got fucking the Dark Knight series and even the batmans before that i just batman or bust and how do you be how do you be some of those avengers movies they just incredible end game speaking of end game let's end our little tea party shall we yeah yeah i think it's about time i think it's about time per usual i'm ready to go get some food But I do say, before we go, do not forget, do not forget, BattleBots Round 2 is coming. I know I had considered discussing some Round 2 stuff, like a little preview thing going into it. But really, there's still a lot of teams. It's just I'm still in shock over some of the results from this past week. Some of my favorite robots, like Mad Catter, out. Out. But which doctor's still hanging in there? Endgame. Both them won their fights. Both spinning bots. Vertical spinning bots. I love those bots. Both those bots. So I'm going to be rooting for them. But uh, it's going to be very interesting this second round. And then I think once we get into the third round, when it's down to eight bots, then we'll really get into some discussion. Some discussion. Because then that'll, that'll really mean business getting down to those eight and also again new japan cup if you're into wrestling or you taking my advice and checking it out at least checked it out the new japan pro wrestling now they have the new japan cup which i mentioned previously and that's going to be starting here in a couple of days so that's going to be fun that's going to be fun too and that'll run through a few weeks throughout march that's going to be good stuff and great wrestling if it's your thing don't miss it don't miss it at all at all and of course we got another episode of the challenge coming tomorrow and this is something i watch with my wife but i enjoy it now it's it's different you know it's funny back in the day I had a girlfriend that really liked the real world and i didn't give a shit about the real world but I didn't mind the road rules and specifically the road rules versus real world challenge i quite enjoyed and then I didn't watch the shit for many years and seen what it's evolved into, but it's still kind of fun just because I like the cha crazy challenges and it's fun to see big dudes lose, you know? <laughs> so, new episode of that. They got a security breach. Supposed to be an elimination going on, but some crazy shit happened. They ended it on a cliffhanger. So we'll have to find out what happens then. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. But that's what I got for you this week. That's what I got for you. <sighs> villains. Real villains. The villain returning. Real villains out there in the world. Fucks. And I much prefer just reading about them or watching them on my screen. But there will come a time when we must do battle against the evil in this real world. <laughs> it just may come a time. Just may come a time. But let's go ahead and end this tea party for real. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So thank you. Thank you once again for joining. I appreciate everyone who hung on. And listen all the way through. I know. Because I can get to rambling sometimes, you know. 
But I guess that's what this is all about. So, hope everyone has a great rest of the week. As always, much love, much love from the Mad Chatter. Don't forget, stay safe, stay vigilant, and stay mad. Because all the best of us are. That's right. Ah, until we chat again. Tata for now. Latest! <laughs>